Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village and I'm going to be testing the brand new TaylorMade M2, the new set for 2017. I've just reviewed the M1 and M2 driver, you can go and see that on my channel, but now I'm going to move into the iron range. There are two new sets of M irons, there's M1 and M2. I've not got hold of the M1 yet, stay tuned, coming soon. The M2 iron, and I said this in last season's M2 iron, these are the strongest lofted irons you're ever going to see. I mean that, they are unbelievably strong. But what I saw last time is it didn't massively affect the height. Let's see if that's still the same with these ones. The strong lofted, so the ball goes further. But then they need to change something there. They've got to make the center of gravity super, super, super low to make that ball still go airborne. Otherwise, it would just come out like a a club less. So this 7-iron, for example, is 28.5 degrees. Yes, do not adjust your hearing on this video, 28.5 degrees. My 6-iron is 30 degrees. Just to put that into perspective, this 7-iron is stronger than my current 6-iron that's in my bag. So what they've had to do is they've stripped a lot of weight from everywhere. They've stripped weight from the hosel. The strip weight from the back, the strip weight from the sides, and they've shoved it all into the bottom of the golf club to make the ball go up in the air. But then they've gone, you know what? What's been the best iron we've brought out in the recent years? Well, I would agree with this, the RSI range, the RSI 1s and the RSI 2s. And that featured face slots as well as the speed slots. That's what they've introduced with this new M2. They've continued the same idea, strong, get it up in the air, but then they've reinforced the sides of the face so those miss hits are supposed to be less affected for distance. Let's hit it and then we'll talk a little bit more. So this is the seven iron. I've got seven, five and pitching wedge I'm gonna hit in this video. They've gone for a more chrome look on this M2 now where the last season's model was a much darker finish. This is a real shiny chrome, which I quite like actually. It kind of makes it look a lot more top end, I would say. Uh, they've continued with the, uh, the green, um, a luminous green colouring along the back. Very, uh, I don't want to say vault, but that's the name that the, the colour that rings to mind as soon as I see it. Let's give this a whack. God only knows how far this is going to go. This is a seven iron, ladies and gents. Yes, that's 190 carry. And I, honestly, I'm not trying to hit this hard. That wasn't a massive hit. It's 192 carry. So that's a five and a half iron. For me, it's not a seven iron. It's a five and a half iron. Um, height wasn't terrible. That went peak height. Oh, I didn't quite catch that. I'll have a look in a minute. I'll hit a few shots with it first. It actually didn't feel that bad. It actually felt okay off the head. It didn't feel too hard. It had a little bit of give and a bit of feedback. <laughs> it's just coming out ridiculous distances. I mean, that's it's stupid. Why would you ever need to hit the ball that far? Um, for me, visually so far, it doesn't look like it's actually going that much lower than my typical 7-iron, but I will see some numbers in a moment. 190. This green that I've put out there at 180-odd was very underestimated of these golf clubs. <laughs> they really are. They were two centred hits. They felt good off the face. Let's go one more. And granted, these clubs are aimed at high, golf, high handicap golfers that maybe don't hit the middle quite as much. I mean, three incredibly consistent golf shots. Three shots, granted, that drew to the left a little bit too much, but there is a bit of offset on this club for me. What they've featured in this club as well, which I must admit, I can, when I first heard it, and it's in the drivers, I thought, come on, it's a ridiculous name, Geoacoustic. And apparently it's geometry and acoustic, and they've just shoved the two words together. Apparently that's supposed to enhance the sound of this golf club. And I'll be honest, it does actually sound quite good. It doesn't sound as if it is super powerful. Sometimes when I've tested super, super powerful golf clubs, they sound, I don't know, you lose a little bit of that, that classic noise of an iron. They sound almost like they're, they're made out of something that's very different to a traditional iron. Well, this doesn't. This actually sounds like a solid enough hit and it sounds like a good player's iron. It doesn't sound like a big, chunky, forgiving iron. And actually, when I set it up behind the ball, something I've not mentioned yet, it doesn't actually look super chunky or forgiving. It doesn't as if it's got, 
it doesn't look like it's a massive big size of a head on the end of a stick. It actually looks like it's got some definition to its lines to a degree. I've always liked the idea of those face slots. What effect they have, it's hard to really measure. But I've always liked the look of them because for me it frames the face quite nicely. It tells you, you know what, just hit in the middle of the face. I'm going to hit one more anyway just so we can get some uh, averages over the four shots there and then I'm going to move on to five iron. That wasn't as solid of a hit. Let's see what that's done. For me, it didn't feel anywhere. There's no difference in distance. They've all gone identical. They've all gone identical. And I'll be honest, I really didn't feel like I hit that one that well. Like I said, that green was way shorter than what I should have been hitting it from. Let's have a look at some numbers just briefly on that shot. Or oh, no shot, sorry. So we've got an average carry distance this is carry, this is 7 iron, 190, and I, I promise you I wasn't trying to hit those as hard as I could. Um, the backspin on those were massively reduced, less than 5,000 RPM of backspin, that is low for a 7 iron. It just feels wrong calling this a 7 iron, it's not, it's a 5 iron, um, or 5.5 iron. What was the peak height on that? 31 yards up in the air. Normal 7.9 for me goes about 32 to 33 yards up in the air. So actually height-wise, it does what it should do for a 7-iron. It just doesn't come out like a 7-iron, it comes out like a 5-iron, distance-wise anyway. Um, they were good hits, they were centred hits. Um, let's just have a quick look at that. You can see the strike location, pretty much smack bang in the middle of the club face. Club head speed, 94 miles per hour, which is, is actually you know, decent speed for a 7-iron, that's almost knocking into, um, well, almost like 6-iron club head speeds there. There's no massive reason behind that. Let's move into 5-iron next. Let's give this a hit. God only knows how far this is going to go. I'm just going to move the simulator back a little bit. I'm going to run out of room otherwise. Okay, so moving into 5-iron. This is 23.5 degrees. Again, another stupidly strong lofty golf club. Um, I've pulled the green back to 230 yards because I actually don't have an idea how far this is going to go. One other feature which I've not talked about just yet. On the hosel just behind the actual neck, they've introduced this little slot which actually makes custom fitting much easier to do. So it's something similar to what Ping have done always with their irons. They've made a little slot. So even though it's a cast hard club head, they can actually move this club head as much as they can a forged iron. So it opens up different options for custom fit, which, which I think always gets a little bit forgotten about with the uh, more, I don't know what to kind of call them, less higher handicapper kind of golfers. They get, they get a bit left behind because they can't bend that club as much as they should be able to, you know, as a custom fitter. Right. Let's go five iron. I honestly, I'm not trying to hit these hard, I promise you. That's gone left, but it's just come out like a bullet. When I look down at that club, I can't see anything but hitting it left. There's a huge chunk of offset on that. Uh, 213 carry distance, and that was a dreadful goal shot. I didn't hit that well at all. It didn't feel that nice. It actually hit quite a bit off the toe. But for a, uh, a four iron, <laughs> dressed up as a five iron, still done pretty good on distance. Let's go again. Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm going to struggle to hit that straight. They're going to always turn left on me there just because of that extra bit of offset. That one felt much nicer. They are coming out a bit low. But again, I don't, I don't actually feel like I'm trying to hit this that hard. I'm kind of just patting them down there and they seem to be coming off the face pretty hot. I remember seeing a golf club a number of years back at a uh, exhibition. It was a tailor-made prototype and it looked similar to this and it had like springs off the back of the head and it kind of reminds me of getting closer to that. It feels like it's springy. When I hit the club face, it feels like there's a level of, of spring back I get off the face. And that must equal more, you know, distance, more club heads, more ball speed, sorry, to get that ball popping out there. That's a better hit. I've actually hit one. I thought it was pretty straight, but it's got a little bit left. Now, just out of curiosity, and this is just me being a bit silly now with this, how far can I actually hit this club? 
because it's all well and good, you know, me just patting it down there, 213. But let's just see what happens when I actually try and hit this golf club. I think this is going to go a million miles. And this is where you see, like, the, um, you know, the, the videos where Dustin Johnson's hitting this five iron. He's going, oh, my God, that's gone 240. Well, it will do, because he's trying to smack it as hard as he wants. So they were averaging about 213, 210 there, roughly. Let's properly hit this. Let's properly try and smack this. I should maybe do that a bit more often, try and hit it harder. Yeah, nearer to 220. I probably didn't actually hit it that well, if truth be told. It felt like it was a little bit off the bottom. But it just shows there it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful hitting club. Regardless of what you want to say about the number at the bottom, it is a powerful club. And it is going to go a long way in the right hands. If you get that somewhat near-centred strike, it's going to go a long way. Let's hit wedge just to finish off the review. Um, in fact, I'll just qu very quickly show you those numbers for the five iron. Yeah, average carry distance there. In I in did include that last big hit. It was 213 on average. Uh, spin rate was less than 4,000. Ball speed was super fast there at 140 or uh, 138. That was pretty fast. Um, what was the height coming out there? 26. Again, not a million miles away from a five iron height. I'm normally about 28 yards up in the air with a five iron. That's a couple of yards lower than that, but that's actually probably only the second shot that's dragged that number down at only 23 yards in the air. Right, wedge. Wedge time. Let's just pull this up. Okay, let's see if I can actually finish this review with a shot that finishes on the green. Not one golf shot I've hit today has finished on the green. One, because I've misjudged how far that seven iron was going to go. And I'm struggling to not hit these straight. These are going quite a bit left. Just because I would imagine that's what these clubs are going to do. You've got to remember, though, these are aimed at higher handicappers. So if you're watching this and you struggle with shots to the right, hitting them a little bit left, you might go, oh, sign me up for a bit of that. That'd be great. 23.5 degrees. Now, we... We drop the face slots from eight down. Eight, nine, pitching wedge don't have the face slots and don't have the speed slots. So it's a bit more of a traditional iron. Obviously, we don't want to be hitting these to, to, uh, to the side of the golf course. Um, let's hit the wedge. I think it actually looks quite nice for a forgiving sized wedge. It doesn't look, again, like a massive shovel. It's got some chiseled, distinguished features, which are, you know suits my eye. As, as looking down at a wedge. Now I've put this at nine iron distance, 150. Come on, hit one green. It's gonna short and then run up actually. Um, that felt quite nice, it came slightly low off the head. Um, 141 carry distance there on a very simple, easy hitting pitching wedge. I think this is where the wedge is actually looking really good in in this set, the lower clubs I think are gonna help this set a lot. That was a nice solid hit. Just run, land them on the front edge and just running them up there. Um, feels good as well. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel harsh. It doesn't feel uncomfortable to hit this wedge. It actually feels like it's got a nice feel. Spinning at low numbers, 7,000 to be honest not high for a wedge, so you might not get loads of stop on the green. But where you might not get a lot of stop, you'll get a lot of distance. Again, just land them just on that front edge and running them up. Might have been a slightly bit ambitious going at 150 there, but at least three shots on the green. Actually feels nice, it actually has a softness to it. I quite like that. Um, Numbers there, just carrying at 141 on average, spinning at 7,800, which is low for a wedge, if I'm honest. I'm normally looking at nearer to 10,000 RPM with a wedge. As a set of golf clubs go, and who these clubs are aimed at, the TaylorMade M2 probably tick a lot of boxes for the golfer that they're aiming at. Distance, they want distance, tick. They want forgiveness, tick. They want a club that's forgiving but doesn't look ugly, tick. It's kind of that type of golfer that this, these are going to massively appeal to. Offset, so the ball doesn't go quite as far to the right. Brilliant, perfect. Looks that actually look quite premium in your bag, perfect. Do we care about lofts, particularly sometimes? 
I know I certainly do as a, as a reviewer in testing clubs because it's, it's my benchmark to see actually what's out there and what's different to other brands and why does this club go further than the others. There's got to be a logistical reason why. But actually, if you're out on the golf course and you're playing with your mates, you don't say I'm hitting my 28.5 degree club. You say I'm hitting my 7 iron. So therefore, if this 7 iron does go further than all your mates that you play with, well, that, that's a nice little feather in your cap and you might not care what the loft is. I think they look smart. I think I like the features now they brought the face slots back in because I love the RSI irons. Um, I love the idea that brought in the custom fitting notch just behind the head. They do look smart. The yellow slash greeny colour, I don't know, I think that just brings it down the, the value of it a little bit. As I mentioned in the driver videos as well, I don't think that looks quite as premium. But the rest of the club I think has got a lot of very good strong points about it. If you want to test these, I would always advise that to, to do it. And test these up against, I'm just trying to think of what category these would fit into. If you're looking at something like this, test these against the Big Bertha, uh, Callaway Big Bertha OSs, maybe the King um, Oversized Clubs, uh, I'm trying to think of some others, maybe the Titleist AP1s, that sort of category. It's the big forgiving area that you should be testing these up against. Maybe the AP1 might not actually fight in that battle, but certainly up against some of the big boys, the big forgiving golf clubs. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the view. Don't forget to check out the videos of the drivers. I've got Fairway Woods hybrids and then some head-to-heads coming soon as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.